Our next speaker is from Rice University, and he will be presenting some work, it uh, looks like, with Rice University and also some other colleagues at Texas A&M. And he is going to talk about uh, deep k-means retraining and parameter sharing with harder cluster assignments for compressing deep convolutions. My name is Yue Wang, and I am a graduate student at Rice University under the supervision of Professor Ian Ling. Today, I'm very excited to present our work, Deep K-Means Retraining and Parameter Sharing with Harder Cluster Assignments for Compressing Deep Convolutions. Actually, this is a co-work with our collaborator, Jun Ru Wu, and his advisor, Professor Zhang Yang Wang at Texas A&M University. So here is the outline of my presentation, and I will first briefly talk about the background and motivations of this work, and then present our contributions. At the end, I will make a quick summary. So let's look into the work's uh, background and motivations. As we know, deep learning has made a big impact in many applications over the past few years. And among all of these algorithms, convolutional neural networks stand out as the most powerful algorithms in many applications due to their record-breaking performances. Therefore, this has been a tremendous need to bring such powerful CNNs to power mobiles and IoT devices at the edge. Where these mobiles and IoT devices at the edge are often resource constrained due to their battery powered property and small form factor. On the other hand, powerful CNNs come at the cost of requiring a large amount of memory to store the weights. For example, the state of the RCNs, AddixNet model and VGGNet need over 200 megabytes to store in their weights. And to close the gap between the edge device's constrained resources and CNN's requirement for large weight requirement, many compression techniques have been proposed. But unfortunately, uh, most of existing compression techniques have the following two limitations. The first one is that they mainly focus on compressing the weights of the fully connected layers. Uh, but the fact is that recent more powerful CN models are only have just one or two fully connected layers, which is a little part of the whole model. So the second limitation here is that most of exciting most of existing compression techniques use the number of operations as an evaluation matrix, while it has been shown that less operations might lead to even more energy cost. So for example, the squeeze net requires less operation, but at the same time, it will cost more energy than addix net. So in our work, we have targeted these two problems, the two limitations at the same time, Next, I will present our contributions. So first, we, we propose a technique referred to as deep k-means, which can aggressively reduce the uh, weight storage requirement. So before we look into details of our deep k-means technique, I would like to briefly uh, mention the observation we have that inspires us to come up with such an idea. So this figure shows the flattened filters of a convolutional layer uh, which, in which each square here stands for one filter. And we can see that there are many raw vectors that looks very similar. So um, it leads us to think, can we cluster similar raw vectors and then store only the centroids of the clusters rather than storing all the parameters, all the raw vectors of the uh, original model? So the answer is yes if we do it properly. So in fact, that is what we did in our deep k-means technique uh, problem. Now, let me introduce our technique. To do so, here I want to show you that filters in each convolutional layer of CNNs are 4D. Uh, in particular, generating each output pixel involves one 3D pixel, one 3D filters. Here, that is an um, output pixel. And as so, <clears throat> here's our notation. The filter size is denoted as S by S, and M is the filter number, 
C is the input channel. So now I will show you our deep k-means technique step by step. First, for each s by s filter, we vectorize them into s row vectors, uh, which is shown here in the second row. As such, by stacking all these row vectors together, we can form uh, s by n weight matrix, which is in the third row. There is a big matrix W. And next, we apply k-means clustering to cluster all these n numbers of raw uh, vectors to into k clusters. So finally, we will place all the raw vectors in the 4D filters uh, of the or original model with this uh, new clustered uh, vectors. By doing so, we only need to store k cluster centroids and the weight indexing information rather than storing all the raw vectors of the original model. Now let's take a closer look at why our deep k-means technique can truly reduce memory usage. So following the same notation we set up earlier, as shown here, the original memory usage is roughly s by s by c by m, whereas, whereas the memory usage after applying deep k-means is k by s plus the indexing size. That is to say the memory usage ratio of the original model and our proposed deep k-means is about s by c by m over k. As c and m are often much bigger than the number of k, so which means we can save a lot of uh, memory usage here. To evaluate the performance of deep k-means without retraining, we compare its achieved compression ratio, CR, and the accuracy drop delta with a baseline named software sharing. And actually, we can find that uh, our method, if you don't do the retraining part, it will have a worse performance than software sharing. So we start to think, can we do it better? The answer is yes. To do so, our k-means regularization is built on the spectral realization of k-means published in NIPS 2001. Here I give a brief review on spectral relaxation of k-means. So first, the spectral relaxation converts the sum of squares k-means objective to the following problem, where TR denotes the matrix trace. The original spectral relaxation considers W is given. Thus we have the, uh, the, the equations from the second bully, and the authors then relax this optimization further to a trace maximization problem by ignoring the special structure of F. Therefore, it ends up with a closed form solution of F. So basically, such spectral relaxation results in that the formulation of the sum of squares minimization in k-means becomes a trace maximization problem, which has a closed form solution and can be scaled to large CM models. So in their method, they assume W is fixed. However, W is no longer a fixed variable during the training. So we propose to update the W and F iteratively. In particular, updating W can follow the standard stochastic gradient descent, which is SGD, and F is updated using the closed form solution of the original proposed spectral relaxation of k-means, as mentioned in the last slide. So I think we have already know what is EW, it's just the original standard loss function. So to use our retraining regulariz regularization, we only need to add the, this term to the original uh, standard loss function, and you can use it. After such a retraining, applying deep k-means would be less likely to degrade the inference accuracy, which means it can restore the uh, accuracy drop after you apply, uh, apply the clustering to your uh, weight parameters. So next, we evaluate our proposed deep k-means technique with retraining process and compare it to still 
the weight sharing, uh, soft weight sharing method, and we can say now if we use retraining method, we can achieve a better per performance, which means under the same CR compression ratio, uh, 45, we have 0.4% uh, percent, less percent accuracy drop. Next, we compare our deep key means technique with another two baselines. One is referred to as one shot, and the other one is low rank. So as highlighted here, our deep key means technique have better performance than them. Uh, at the same time, we can have less accuracy drop, and also we can keep a higher compression ratio. Also, similar results for comparing to the low rank, which is in the red boxes here. So for the interest of time, uh, here we only show the comparison with three baselines, and the comparison with more baselines can be found in our paper. To take a closer look, here we compare our deep, deep key means technique with a baseline a car, which is a, a filter pruning method, is also another just compression technique. And the accuracy versus the layer-wise compression ratio is shown at the left, while that of the second layer is shown as the right. So we can say that our deep key means technique achieve a higher compression ratio uh, in the left figure, and it actually degrees more gen uh, gradually than the original car method. Next, I present the second contribution of our paper. As mentioned earlier, state-of-the-art uh, techniques use the number of operations as the evaluation metrics, but it has been shown that such metrics does not align with energy cost. This motivates us to propose a set of energy-aware metrics, uh, enable us to predict runtime energy cost once given a CNN model. The energy cost of a CNN consists of two parts. The first one is the computational cost, which is straightforward to be calculated. For example, in this slide, the computational cost can be defined as the total number of 1B4 adders, where the total number of four adders associated with a dot product between a B sub W uh, bit, which is precision, weight, and the B sub X bit input are captured by this equation. So in addition to the computational cost, the energy cost of a CNN is often dominated by the memory access and data movement between the memory and the processing units. So the computational cost is only come from the, uh, the processing units, but this part of the energy cost is uh, come from the data movement between the memory and the computing units. So we propose representational cost to model this energy cost using the product between the total number of weights and activations to be stored and the total number of times the, uh, they were used during the computing. So it is captured by this equation. To verify our proposed energy model for CNNs, we, prepare, uh, we compare the estimated energy cost of our model versus that obtained from hardware implementation for the cases of AlexNet and GoogleNet CN models, and is shown in the left and right figure, uh, respectively. So in these two figures, X axis is the energy estimated from the hardware, and y-axis is the energy estimated using our own model. And we use R-squared uh, coefficient here, which is to uh, describe how, uh, how two kinds of data are aligned between each other. So if the score is close, close to one, it means they are highly aligned. So we can say the R-squared coefficient number for AlexNet is 0.9931 is close to one, and also for the R square number for Google Net. After we have confirmed our energy model, we can use it to test the energy cost. Earlier, I've shown that our deep key means technique can reduce the memory usage a lot. So this slide is to show that it uh, 
leads to more energy savings as well as uh, the shr shrinking of the uh, memory saving. So in particular, the right figure shows that using our technique, uh, there will not be an obvious accuracy drop if the reduction in weight presentational cost is lower than 95%, which is there. But actually, the car method will have an obvious accuracy drop when the reduction in weight representat representational cost is more than 90%. And similar results uh, for the left figure. Now, we have, uh, we have the summary. So uh, first, we proposed a compression technique, which is our dip means method. It, it is targeted for compressing the last explored and dominant convolutional layers. And it outperforms four uh, state-of-the-art compression techniques. Also, it is scalable to large CNN models. And then, we propose a energy model for CNNs. It can estimate energy. Its estimated energy is consistent with that of the uh, hardware implementation. And also, it is enable researchers to predict runtime energy given a CNN model. Yeah, that's all of my presentation. Thank you. And any questions? Do we have time for um, a few questions? We have one up here. Yes, uh, a quick question. Yeah. And forgive me if I missed it, but how did you tune K? How did you choose the right number of clusters to use in your algorithms? Uh, normally, we will choose a relatively bigger K, which means we have um, smaller compression ratio. Because you have bigger K, you need to store more centroids. But after we have bigger K, we will say the accuracy drop will will not be that much. So we can uh, gradually tune in the K and uh, make it smaller. And uh, it's not that time consuming because first we have some uh, kind of uh, requirement of the compression ratio. So if you have such uh, requirements, you have a, a, a number of K, which, may, uh, which will lead to a exact uh, compression ratio. Thank you for the talk. It's a very interesting idea. Um, I'm just curious, how many uh, like famous CNN models have you tried to use uh, compression techniques, like uh, you know, use key mean to save the weight and uh, and use a uh, new new laws to retrain? Yeah, um, actually, we tried AlexNet, GoogleNet, and YResNet. I think these are very um, popular CNN models. Noidis and we, uh, we also tried on uh, CIFAR-10 uh, data set and the ImageNet data set, which is uh, bigger than CIFAR-10, so. Hi, uh, I was just wondering what are some of the uh, drawbacks you guys face with this model? Because I know um, predicting the K value is one drawback. What are some of the other drawbacks? Uh, you mean the drawback of our K means? OK, so the drawback is to you need to, um, yeah, because k-means clustering needs you to give it a k, uh, exact k number, right? So you need to uh, manually tune it. And another drawback is that um, we know k-means algorithm is more, um, it's better on some uniform distribution of data. But sometimes the uh, filter parameters distribution are not that uniform. Maybe uh, there are three clusters, and the first cluster has most of the samples of the whole data set. So in this condition, k-means method can, the, the compression ratio of k-means method does not, uh, ca cannot achieve that high. So uh, in order to fix this, uh, this problem, we have to use other kinds of uh, different clustering algorithms. And actually, we have tried some other different uh, clustering algorithms like hierarchical clustering algorithms, which uh, give us a better results when you encounter that kind of situations. Yeah. 
Uh, let's thank our speaker one more time. Oh, thank you.